the second of four in the ever popular Rambo series has often been referred to by both critics and fans as the Parsons knows of the genre. With both direct and hidden messages all throughout at the 1999 death of avant-garde film messiah Stanley Kubrick, over the course of this video we shall explore themes and ask why this expose should come from such a dandy source. Part 1 Pre-Production Early 1984, Sylvester Stallone, reeling with anger and rage having been jettisoned by Paramount to play Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop in favour of black newcomer Eddie Murphy, was desperate to rehash the success of 1982's First Blood. With the hawk's eye on Hollywood's cookie jar, the potent and lucrative team of director Hal Needham and everyman good old boy Burt Reynolds, still milking the cow of Stroke Race, had tried to poach the rights for a Rambo sequel from beneath Stallone's nose. Needham had expressed intentions at recasting John Rambo as a Reynolds vehicle and switching the Colonel Troutman character to a Dom de Louise platform. His intentions were to rebrand the sequel with a lighter comedic approach reflecting the success of the Cannonball trilogy. This inset shows the proposed contract which I have been able to source using top insiders who were at a high level in Caraloco in 1983. It shows the offer for Needham Reynolds Productions. Stallone was adamant John Rambo would not be portrayed in this light and cajoled the producers with the threat of not making another Rocky if they, were re if they refused him to return as John Rambo. They knew Stallone was not joking and proceeded to tell Needham and Reynolds to fuck off. Part 2 The Plot John Rambo is released from a prison by the government for a top secret covert mission to the last place on earth he wanted to return, the jungles of Vietnam. This plot was being thrown around Hollywood and interested a vast and formidable array of directors including Martin Scorsese, Steven Spielberg and a bearded loner Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick, a known anti-war activist, had several meetings with Stall Stallone and expressed a desire in bringing the script to life as he was pissed off with having his work magnified by Scousers. However, after Kubrick's initial idea to re-envisage Richard Gere's hit, an officer and a gentleman, he wanted to follow up to be a prequel where Rambo joins the military in the 1960s, undertakes training under a tough enrollment officer and then to Viet Cong to fight the slope. Stallone had Kubrick physically thrown off the set and effectively stonewalled from further talks. Kubrick would later go on to direct Full Metal Jacket, which is a non too subtle attempt to celluloid his vision for this using thinking man's tough guy Matthew Moding as essentially the John Rambo as a kid character. Renter buddy British actor Stephen Berkhoff, a failed hatchet faced country and western wannabe, Charles Napier supplied the movie Double Crossing Superiors. An interesting theme is with Rambo's choice of weapon the bow and arrow. Why does he use a bow and arrow? Surely a silenced rifle would be more effective. Now it's true, he was not sent in to fight. So that could be the reason. But why does he have an explosive tipped arrow? Explosive tipped arrows 
do not exist as the weight would fuck up the trajectory. This is one of the many plot holes in the movie. Was this intentional? Perhaps. <laughs>